Well, hello, today is Monday, November 18th, 2019. My name is Angela Hooper Minifield of Minifield and Associates, and this is your HR moment. So Mondays are always really busy. Everybody's catching up for the weekend. And um, one of the things that I try to do is respond to questions that I'm asked. So today, while I was out and about before I did some training, I was sent a note. So some of you may know I do some coaching and mentoring of some young adults in their early 20s. Uh, I guess technically, technically millennials, right? And so often we hear uh, how millennials are different, their passions, how to communicate with them is very different. And I'm coming around to that. You know, there was, if you've been around me, um, you've probably heard me speak a little bit about the fact that every, I believe every generation's different. And I remember some of the comments that I even heard when I first got in the workforce because I was in an office where the closest person to my age was about 20 years older than me. And some of the same things that we're saying about quote unquote millennials now, those things were said about me, you know, 30 years ago. But nonetheless, um, I mentor, coach, and try to help some of these young adults acclimate into the workforce and figure out, you know, their purpose, their passion. So I got a note today that um, one of my protege mentees was in HR's office. And the reason why she was there was because someone of a different race said something to her that she found offensive about her quote unquote blackness. So in other words, indicating to her, even though they weren't of the race, that she wasn't black enough. She got offended. She said something back. And long story short, she ends up in HR's office for a verbal reprimand. Um, this is what I can tell you when it comes to matter of, matters of race. Number one, we, we cannot act like issues of race don't come up in the workplace. Everything that's said is not discriminatory, but even if it's not discriminatory, it doesn't make it appropriate. And so there are things like, you know, we know there are protected classes, race, you know, national origin, age, uh, sexual orientation, different things are protected by, you know, the civil rights, Title VII and things like that, the Civil Rights Act, Title, in Title VII of the Constitution, but it doesn't mean that everything rises to that level. So the other thing we have to ask ourselves as supervisor is when people say things to people about their race, or make comments that make people feel uncomfortable. Maybe we're not violating any constitutional acts and maybe it's not an act of discrimination, but maybe it's creating an uncomfortable workplace. And so while the person who received the comment has to always make sure they're professional, that if they respond, that they do so in a tactful and responsible way. So no one's condoning overreacting or being belligerent or disrespectful in response, because that's a separate issue. The question becomes as a supervisor, how do you also demonstrate that level of equity? And what I mean by that is ensuring that the rules are followed, that people behave accordingly with their tone, with the words that they say in response, but also acknowledging that perhaps the thing that they're responding to should have never been said to them to start with. Because again, when we act as if it's only the response that matters, the messaging that some people can receive is who I am and how I show up doesn't matter, nor are my differences going to be protected. You know, when we talk about diversity and inclusion and all the key words that we use about the workplace, to me, it all boils down to knowing I belong here. And not just belong, but welcomed and welcomed in my authentic self. So I don't have to acquiesce. I don't have to tone me down. So I don't have to tone my blackness or my Italianness or my, you know, Greekness, whatever my national origin is, down in order to be welcomed here. And so when another coworker then challenges the veracity of my ethnicity, ethnicity and my behavior, how do I respond to that? And again, there's a right and a wrong way to respond to everything. And trust me, I've had some 
ignorant things said to me in the workplace, highly ignorant. But again, I, I try to separate ignorance from malice. And I also try to educate people and help them understand. And again, I don't believe every matter is the reason to file a complaint or you know take legal action. Again, sometimes people just say things with no ill intent or sometimes they're just ignorant. But I do believe that the organization needs to have it brought to their attention. HR should get involved. And how we respond needs to be in a way that's still professional, that's um, tactful, and does not bring any disparagement upon ourselves or the organization. So long story short, this person that I know personally went from really liking their job to literally hating it, hating it after one incident. And I can promise you, it's not about the person who said what they said to them. It's how the supervisor handled it and how HR handled it. I, I promise you. And so when I tell you how we respond to things and treat people and how we show them that they matter is a clear indication of how long a person will work with an organization, especially if they have options, it's true. So again, as a supervisor, as an HR professional, when people bring you these matters, and again, we can act like race doesn't come up in the workplace if, we, if we're a lie. Like all things that are said are not grounds for you know punitive action, but it doesn't mean you negate the feelings of the person that it was said to. Even if they responded wrong, we have to hear them out. Again, you've heard me say this before and I'll say it again. We validate their emotions. We validate their feelings, especially if we don't know what it's like to be in that situation, right? Because we only know what we know. None of us have walked in each other's shoes. So we only know our current experiences. So our lens, our perspective may be different than the person who has had that happen. And so as a result of that, we need to hear how that made them feel and why that bothered them, even if we don't think they should be bothered. So this organization who had a really good employee, they're probably going to lose this person. And it goes back to that other thing we hear all the time. People don't quit jobs. They quit supervisors. This supervisor and this um, HR department did not handle this situation well. I promise you, literally, as I'm sitting here, I just got a new message. It popped up if you heard the beat. The person just said, I hate it here. Fortunately for this person, they have an opportunity to work somewhere else, so they probably will. But even if they didn't, I can guarantee you they would use all their efforts and their energies now to get out of this place of work because they don't feel heard. They don't feel listened to. What they feel right now, and I'm using the feeling word very intentionally because at work I use the term think because I am more tactical. But people's feelings do matter. And even though we may not be relational as, a, as a, a dominant style, when we're talking about certain matters, we have to tap into the feeling side and let people know we care for them. We hear what they're saying and how they feel about what was said to them matters. Again, how they respond is totally different. And we can manage that, coach that up, explain to them how we want them to bring future issues to the table. But it does not mean we negate how they feel today about what is said to them. So don't be blindsided by matters of race when they happen in the workplace, because they do happen. They happen every day, probably more than any of us realize. Again, everything that's said is not you know, malicious in intent. At least that's my belief. You know, I don't believe people just, some people do, but not in general. I think some people just say stupid and ignorant things, right? So that for me is also as a supervisor or an HR person is a glean, it helps me glean into where there's room to glow, grow within our organization. What kind of help do our employees need to know what they can and cannot say to one another? But when someone does have something said to them that offends them, understand when they speak from that offended space that they're not going to always say things perfectly. We coach them up as well, but we also express to them that we regret this happened and we're going to do what we can in our power to make sure it doesn't happen again. So that's the 
HR moment for today. Again, uh, my name is Angela Hooper, Minifield of Minifield and Associates. I really encourage you to seek out opportunities to grow yourself and grow your team and to treat people no matter what they look like, their age, their color, their sexual orientation. It doesn't matter. Teach, treat everybody like they matter and that you value them. You do that. People will want to work for you. Your organization will grow and thrive. That's my talk for today. Yeah, it was a little heavy, but this is the reality we live in. So have a great day and we will talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.